Hey everyone, in today's video, I'll be doing a tutorial on Clip Studio 2.0's new shading tool that can bring an image automatically from this to this. So let's get started. First of all, as a requisite for this tutorial, you're gonna need to have your line art layer on a separate layer as your colors. Also, you will be setting your line art as the reference layer by clicking right here. It will be marked by this little light post. Secondly, you can have all your colors on one layer or you can have them on individual layers. That's what I did right here. As you can see, I found that having a folder with individual layers, uh, colors on, in it has a more precision for the tool. As you can see right here, I'll give you an example. These two images were done using the same lighting and same base image, except the one on the right has individual color layers right here. And the one on the left has only one big color layer. We can see that overall the image is basically the same except in the small details and zones of different colors. Right here the eyes are very bad on the one layer part as opposed to the multiple color layers. So I would recommend always using multiple col color layers when it's possible for you. So now let's get into how this, to this tool works. Okay, so what you'll have to do now is go into the edit mode and right here select help to shade or shading help depending on your language. Um, this will bring in a pop-up window with a manipulator right here. This is the representation of your light source. You can move it however you want and see the light uh, modifies in real time. These sliders also act as different sliders right here in your window. This one up here is the highlight power or strength and this one is the shadow strength and this is for the overall, overall uh, light power as you can see right here in your window we have several presets that i encourage you to try for this automatic shadow we have two main source of shadows two main types of shadows i mean smooth shading and cell shading as you can see, cell shading gives us the classic cell shaded look from anime or uh, some, some games. And smooth shading is something with very smooth gradients. Let's start with, with the smooth shading one. For each color, we can choose to use a color right here that we select and move however we want. And it will update in real time. Or we can also use the layer's base color. I'm not a fan of this option, but you can also change, for example, the tint of the, the base color, the saturation of it, the strength. As you can see right here, it will also change this slider on the manipulator and the blurriness. You can see a small difference in the hair right here. And you can do the exact same thing for the shadows. So let's get back to a base color that we can select. A nice orange, for example. A golden light. For each color, you can choose uh, whatever blending mode you want. Normal, for example, if you just want a, a clear color on it. You can have all the lighting modes. Screen, color density. And same thing for the shadows. You can choose a color. Choose the blending mode, multiply, color density, add, however you want it. And then you can choose to add more or less of these shadows. This slider right here, the balance, is the same thing as this one. It will, uh, it will act as a balance between your shadows and your highlights. So if you're all the way down, you have almost only highlights. All the way up, almost only shadows. And right here, we have a, a mix of both of them. And as you can see, if you take your light source and put it further away, it will also impact visually uh, the strength of the light. Everything will be smoother. 
like if we had a bigger diffusion light and if you get it much closer we have harder shadows harsher highlights as well the last thing we can touch is the light source itself we can have a light bulb right here is uh, what we already had or parallel lights um, these ones have less option in my opinion it doesn't matter how you move them and they will always act the same and they only give a direction for the light so you have all the same options be beside the direction but you don't have the proximity of the light bulb and finally this box right here i think is very important it's the it's the this is the box that when you take it it will take into account your reference layer uh, for the line art right here and if you don't take it well look what happens it will only take into account i think the the color layer and this is why we have uh, i don't know these shadows that are useless completely useless so i would suggest always taking this box and always having your line art layer set as a reference layer right here now if we go into the cell shading tab we, we have um, some kind of different options. Right here, we can set the threshold of how shadows and in, uh, highlights interact between each other. And as you can see, this is also the case with uh, the strength of the manipulator right here. It will, it will change our threshold right here. So you have two ways of changing it, however you want. This is more global. And this is the, and this one is more precise because you can choose to move only one of them, for example, in different di directions. Next, we have uh, in in the cell shading mode, we have solid colors for each uh, layer, let's call it uh, or threshold, and then we have separate um, blending modes as well. So we can have a highlight right here in color density, for example, as you can see right here. We can also add it in the add mode. Then we have this color set as green. If you set it to normal, this is the zone that was taken into account. And right here, these ones are set into multiply mode. So they act as the shadows we can see right over here. We can have more saturation in the shadows if we want. And right here, even more. As you can see, even in multiply mode, we can see it right here. Um, the first shadow doesn't overlap over the second one. It's Each zone is very individual. So we can have our deep shadows, if we want, act as maybe a light source to be, to be like a bounce light, for example. And same thing at the other one. We have this box that should always be checked, otherwise it's pretty useless. The strength right here refers to how much the lines on your line art layer are taken into account. So zero, it will take nothing into account, and 100% everything, but it will it will be very rough. When you're happy with whatever you have right here, you can just click on OK, and uh, this uh, auto shading tool will generate two or more layers depending on the mode you chose. Right here, I have a highlight layer and a shadow layer, both coming in between my line arts and my colors. And this is it for this uh, new tool in Clip Studio 2.0. I hope this was useful for you. Uh, tell me in the comments what you think of this tool, if you tested it already. Do you think it's ready for like pro production? Maybe webtoons or something, manga? to add some quick shadows into a lot of different panels. Would you use it on one illustration that is very highly detailed or not? Or do you think it's still too lacking for that? And if you have not tested it, is, is it a feature that would make you switch over to Clip Studio 2.0? I know this one I had high hopes for. Right now, I think it's a little underwhelming. But this, this specific smooth shading mode is pretty nice and I can see some applications for it that I could use uh, in a comics, for example, or a webtoon. But maybe just, just this is it, not more.
Okay, so this is it for me. Uh, okay, so this is it for me. I'll see you in the next video. I'll do a lot more on Clip Studio 2.0 and other drawing software. In the meantime, keep creating everyone and happy painting. Bye.